All right, folks, as you can see, this contract presents us with one of our most ambitious missions to date, and also one of our most potentially lucrative missions to date. This was a bit of a worrying mission because we've never been to the moon before, we've never been more than 100 kilometers up before, but the advance bonus, the 20,000 kerbucks we got up front, that's providing us with a bit of wiggle room that lets me put in a bit more safety margin than I have in the past. For instance, this advanced SAS module here, I wouldn't have put that in before because that is a thousand kerbucks and it's better to buy a cheap rocket than a working rocket sometimes. But this, I wanted to go for, I wanted to go first try without a hitch, without a hiccup, without any of that. I'm also experimenting with some other more advanced techniques. For instance, the asparagus staging you see here. If I understand correctly, these tanks are supposed to drain into these tanks, which are supposed to drain into the main tank, and then some science happens and you go faster, faster. Uh, I've never done asparagus staging before. It seems good in theory, but so do a lot of things. We'll see if it works. This is the ISA MapSat plugin. This is what we're going to use for the satellite to give it its surveillance capabilities. Um, we'll be keeping the data for ourselves so we can inform future moon missions. We'll also be passing it on to our contractors, of course. This is our return stage. The smallest fuel tank, smallest rocket, main service thingamajigaboo, and since we'll be coming up from high lunar orbit instead of a lower orbit, we're going to have to be using a heat shield. It's stuck right in there, that's another plug-in. Um, I don't quite understand how the entry profile is supposed to go, so I'm going to try something a bit gentler than I might normally, and hopefully the guy won't burn up in there. I'll see you on the launch pad. And we have Bob with us today, providing the last in the first three for us to send up. After this, we'll be getting rookie scrubs who no one really cares about, so safety will be less of a priority. Don't tell them that, though. Okay, let's turn SAS nav on, throttle all the way up, and what time of day is it? Noonish? Meh, okay. Um, launch? Oh, we're going up. Well, of course we're going up. We're, we're sitting on top of a very large explosion. Um, Advanced SAS is doing a very good job. I forgot how nice this is to not have to worry about every single little gust of breeze. Already up to a hundred meters per second and one kilometer. It's looking good so far. As soon as these first Stages burn out. I'm going to separate and begin a very slight gravity turn. I want to be as efficient as possible on this mission, as with all missions. Oh, calm down, Bob. Nothing's even happened yet. I don't think. Uh, did something? Did something fall off that I didn't see? Okay, one, two, three, four, five engines. There goes those. Let's begin the gravity turn a bit. Uh, just a bit. There we go. And hold that. Thank you. Alright, let's increase the gravity turn. Let's increase it a lot, actually. I, I fell asleep with the wheel there. We should be about at the 45 by this point. At least well, that's how I normally do it. Um, what's the orbit looking like? Eh, nominal, I guess. <laughs> Imagine hearing any, like, NASA or SpaceX mission control saying, eh, nominal-ish. Yeah, that wouldn't fly. Well, it would fly, but not very specifically. Ah, we've hit the upper, upper atmosphere, the part where this... Oh, staging, 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 stop talking, stage. Uh, what's our app office now? 87, 88, 89, let's cut at 100, because it's a nice even number, and I like nice even numbers, like that one. That's not an even number. Well, meh, good enough. Actually, let's turn on the map sat for now. Let's just... Ah, yes, that's interesting. Uh, 
I have no idea why it is that shape, but... Oh, look, I can see the coordinates, too. That's handy for something. Kerbalpedia. What's Kerbalpedia? Ooh, sun? What's the sun? Why, why am I looking at the sun? Oh, okay, there we are. Kerbin. Uh, oh, that's, that's actually very handy. I might start bringing these along on more missions. It gives me a lot of useful information that I wouldn't get normally. Uh, they're not too expensive, only like a thousand. And for a piece of navigational equipment, that's pretty cheap. Uh, let's close that because we are closing in on our apoapsis. Let's begin to level out. Yeah, these are still slow. One day, folks, one day I'll be able to afford some sort of RCS system. Day is not today. Oh, come on, Bob. There's nothing happening. You're just in orbit like you've been in orbit like a million times. So shush. Mm. Let's fast forward. We're not under acceleration. Go on, spam, spamming. Okay. Okay, slow. Eh. Did I'll just watch the vertical speed needle to decide when to burn. That's a bit... Oh, like now. I burn now. Uh, right on the mark. Well, actually, let's move it a bit up, because when I hang the satellite, I want to do it in a, in a somewhat inclined orbit, so it can scan more of the moon's surface. It can get more than just that equatorial band. It can get uh, higher latitudes and lower latitudes. Uh, yeah, let's see if this works. Uh, what's the orbit looking like? It's looking like an orbit. Oh, and look, the moon is, like, right there. We can... Oh, wait, I should probably not do that quite yet. Should probably get an encounter first. Okay. Uh, what's our fuel looking like? Our fuel is looking like a great deal of fuel. This is... This is working out great, folks. This is... This is nice. Wait. Oh, I put four on there. How very clever of me. I guess. I don't remember doing that, so maybe it was the gremlins. And the moon is rising right on time. Probably enough of a wonka burn. Let's move it back onto the 90. If you can't tell, I've never tried that before. I've never tried, tried specifically to enter an inclined orbit around the moon. Because normally, it's a disaster. And it's probably going to be a disaster this time because I'm going to come in way over the moon. Um, prepare for impromptu math faking. Okay, we're getting close, so let's bring this up and keep an eye on our orbit. Uh, burning fast? Burning slow. So, slow, 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 slow. Uh, erp, derp, erp. Okay, that okay. That's interesting. Hee <laughs> hee. That little that little whoop there is kind of funny. Um, let's see what's the periapsis on that one. Five four eight. Let's see if that comes down when I burn. That the, wait. Oh, cut cut. That is coming down, but in a very strange manner. Um, let's move back over to the prograde vector. We have your vector, Victor. Who's Victor? I don't know. Is there a Victor, Kerman? There should be. I like the name Victor. And I'm babbling now, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, burning. Okay, that is, that's like moving a lot of laterally. Um, I'm going to have to Thus, very slowly and follow it with my mouse. I wish they would. I wish it would tell you, like in a little box over here, what your periapsis was going to be. Oh, and I lost it. Uh, turn around, turn around, real quick now. Um, well, I don't need to turn around too quick. I've got time. Mm. Why am I moving? I just, I just moved. 
Don't moo, David. It's very, it, it's very mood. Okay. And I missed retrograde by like 90 degrees. In space, no one can hear you facepalm. And it's, it's actually slowing down. Why is it doing that? It's like some sort of weird frame of reference thing that I don't get. Like, I have I really don't know quite well which rotations are which when, when I'm in orbit. I just try one, and if that's the right one, I'm happy. Okay, there we go. Um, 208, I'm going to have to bring that in because the contract did specify a low lunar orbit. But for now, that's a pretty good place to be. Um, let's fast forward to that lunar encounter, and I will join you there. Okay, we're closing in real quick now. Uh, bring down the warp bit. Uh, 26 min 20, 20 minutes nominally, at least in their time. Um, I don't want to fast forward anymore, but... This is going a bit slower. Okay. Um, there we go. And let's see what kind of geometry we have going here. Okay, that's that's almost a polar orbit. That is actually ideal. That lets us scan almost all the moon. Uh, we can we'll miss out on the poles, but almost everything will be gotten eventually. This does mean it will take longer to scan because we're spinning in the way the moon isn't, I guess. So every orbit will be getting a smaller and smaller chunk of the moon than we would if we were going in an equatorial orbit. But we'll get it all eventually. Uh, let's move into the periapsis now. Woom, whoosh, pretty curves. Uh, a bit more. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Mm. And cut it. And this, and get over to that prograde. That's not prograde, that's retrograde. Wrong grade. Hold. Fire. How are we on fuel? We are good on fuel. This should be enough to get us into the orbit we're hunting. Um, oop. Okay, let's watch that a bit closer now. Um, he didn't specify what a low orbit was. I'm going to guess 50 kilometers up. So cutting now. 48. Dang it. No one saw that. If, if, if anyone asks, this is a 50 kilometer orbit. Let's get over there, circularize or eyes. Forgot when to stop pronouncing that word. Um, hmm. Hmm. Can we? Oh, missed it. Hopefully it'll be. Oh, and of course, I forget when you. When you assume one attitude, either prograde or, or retrograde, at apoapsis, you're you're automatically at the other one when you get to periapsis. I don't know if that's like a real thing or not, but that's how it works in this game. So I gotta remember that. Uh, thrust, give it a bit of a get us get us a bit of steering thrust. There, that that's talking right. Um. Hold and oh shoot! I crusted. That was a lot of thirty-eight and fifty-two. Um, okay, I think we can counter that out by waiting until the next apoapsis and thrusting prograde again. That'll get us evened out. Mm hmm. Yep. Stop that. 
and prograde is, of course, as far away from me as possible. Ain't that always the way? Hold that. There we are. Mm, not quite. Er, hold, getting in closer. Why am I being so precise on this one? I mean, all the rest of it has just been meh, close enough. Um, burning 39, 40, 41. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50-ish, 50, 52. Eh, that's pretty good, actually. Let's... Well, we can't use any more of this fuel because we are in the orbit we're going for. So, reluctantly, I'm going to have to throw this stage However, I'm going to do it in the most amusing way possible. Also, in order to keep it from colliding with our satellite at any future point, I'm going to start spinning. This spin, if I can get it spinning fast enough, will throw the stage off into new orbit. Uh, like when you throw one of those sling things. Um, hmm. For some reason, it seems to be capping the way I spin, the, the speed at which I spin. I can't spin very much faster than this. It seems like I'm... Okay, where do I want to throw it? Let's throw it retrograde, shall we? So, retrograde is... Let's see. So, that's prograde, right? Re retrograde is away from us, so I should throw it when it's pointed down. That should give it the most velocity that way. And that was a dummy stage, one of those stages that has nothing in it. Um, let's try that again, shall we? And... we That's so cool. Let's see what that did for it. Wait, was that another stage? I could have sworn I heard another stage fire off there. Oh, that would have been a disaster. Well, not really, but it would have been annoying. Um, okay, that is... Okay, yeah, you see how that throws it into a way lower orbit on that side than it did the rest of the craft. For this part, we're going to stabilize our spin as much as we can so that when we release it, it'll be in precisely this orbit. And, oh, wow, look at the... That's going at like two or three kilometers a second. Uh, wait, those aren't. Th no, those are still meters. Two or three meters a second. That's still faster than it would have been going. Um, actually, let's make a few orbits. See how it's getting. Okay, that's interesting. You see how this highly inclined orbit is giving us a much broader range of latitudes than we did when we were leaving Kerbin. When we were leaving Kerbin, we were still more or less in an equatorial orbit. We were slightly inclined, but only a bit. Now that we're on the moon, we are way inclined. This is almost a polar orbit. So we're getting a huge swipe up. And this, yeah, this is where we are now. I just saw it update. This is, I'm guessing, an artifact of of projectual of projection distortional thing. What's this? Okay, I have I have no idea what I'm looking at there. This one makes more sense. And anomalies. This thing can scan for anomalies. Uh, let's do that. Actually, let's fast forward. Will it scan while fast forwarding? It doesn't appear so. Hmm. Well, still, uh, I'll spend a bit of time off camera scanning the moon for anomalies. See what we can find. Maybe there's something worth selling there. Uh, in any case, let's release the satellite and skadoob. No, not yet. 
there's the one. There it goes. Oh, don't bump into the satellite, people. That's... Uh, you break it, you buy it. Um, okay. Uh, if I can get myself figured out here, I'll make a bit of a burn to move away from the satellite. Uh, oh... Okay... Okay. Just the littlest bit of thrust to get us into a distinct orbit from the satellite. Yeah. We are slightly separated away now. And for our return trip, we're going to want to burn against the way the moon is going. The moon is going this way, so we'll want to burn in such a way that we're leaving the moon going that away. For that to happen, we'll want our orbit to intersect with the moon's orbit. So this point here, that needs to be on the moon's orbit. That way, when we burn, we're burning as far away from the moon as, as we can. So I'm going to fast forward now to that point and join you when I get there. Okay, there it is. Now you can see that our orbit intersects with the moon's orbit. So when we burn going, when we burn, we can burn here to stretch our orbit out this way. And when we leave the moon, the burn we, the burn we used to leave the moon will also be working to burn against the velocity the moon is giving us, giving us the best fuel efficiency. So let's warp around to there. And we'll be going back, looks like, through the underside of the moon. I don't know if that matters, but... Buttons. Pressing buttons. Spinning round to the other side. Oh, there it is. And... Feels good. Bob's still scared. I, I haven't been paying too close attention, but every time I look at Bob this entire mission, he's been... Bug-eyed screaming. Uh, burn then. Okay, that's a bit... I went... I was a bit late. That apoapsis should be, like, right on the moon. And... Okay, there's our escape. What we got? What we got? Um... Three million kilometers up. Wait, no, that's... 3,000 3, kilometers, 3 million meters. Math. Okay, we can burn a bit more to bring that down. Let's see when that stops helping. Uh, 25, 24, 19, 18, 17, 18, 7, 6, 5, 4. We, can, we might be able to get like all the way down on this. That's nice. Oh, we're going back up. Okay, that's about the best we can get out of that. Um, let's warp to that escape, and I'll join you when things get more interesting. Okay, as I said, I'm using a heat shield for this mission, so we can't just fall in from the moon and not expect to live. So I'm going to circularize the orbit a bit so that when we are coming in, we're coming in with a bit less velocity. And because you see now that we're still falling in from almost the moon. Uh, burn. What's our fuel situation? Our fuel situation is golden. Um, hmm. It's too bad they don't make fuel tanks smaller than that one. Because for a lot of this, I don't need that much fuel. Like, this return stage, it doesn't need much more than half of one of those to get where it needs to be. And inversion there. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, one hundred kilometers there. Um, hmm. Now, from this altitude, I'm pretty sure I could survive 
I think. I haven't messed around too much with the mechanics on this. So let's burn, oh, call it 30,000. Oh, no, I just, I just got a case of the willies. Let's bring the apoapsis down again to get as best a chance of keeping Bill alive as possible. Okay, flip around, hold, oh, okay, that's better, yeah, this is a lot easier with the advanced SAS. Uh, actually, this might just be our reentry burn, once we get, once we get the apsides inversion, sure, that's what you call it now, Man, I don't know. The inversion that we're about to get right there, where the periapsis becomes the apoapsis and vice versa. Oh, shit. 68. That is just under the atmosphere. Um, sh okay, I'm going to be back with you a bit. Uh, I'm going to see if I have enough to get some sort of arrow breaking done. Uh, or see if I can find a gas station, maybe. Um, Next up, a rescue mission, perhaps. I must regretfully inform you that approximately two days and eight hours into the mission, flight control went up to make a sandwich. Shortly thereafter, Bob Kerman re-entered the atmosphere at high speed, and with no one to issue the deploy parachute command, impacted into the terrain of Kerman at terminal velocity. All hands were lost. Funeral arrangements are being made, will be paid in full by the KSP CEO. And he sends his regrets. However, the sandwich was quite good. See you next time.